the network. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the perspective now. Like, if mm-hmm. let's just say I'm. I don't know, Jay Z, right? And what I makes them different, in, right? Is that, that, yeah, what right? makes it different for me to be the figure right. and give off a good interview versus one of the interviews right. that don't come off either it comes off horrible or it just doesn't doesn't have any impact. It doesn't feel the the same. Right. Okay. So, like I said, with the living room thing, where they come and say he says hi to everybody immediately off the cuff, you're getting that respect level. You feel respected. You feel seen. You feel honored. You know what I mean? So, as mm-hmm. an artist, you're probably gonna let your guard down. Artist, politician, whatever, whatever the case. Um, Maybe. And then also, I think as an interviewer, you can't be so hungry or thirsty to create a moment that you, you know, don't go through levels of this interview. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. You have to allow the conversation to go where it goes. You know what I mean? Like you can write down like some questions that you want to ask, but you can't be married to those questions. You know what I mean? Because when you're married to that, you're missing out on the actual conversation that's happening, you know? Um, so there'll be times where maybe they had a, he had some questions, Charlotte had some questions, Envy, and it just didn't get to it because the conversation didn't go there. It doesn't mean that the interview ended up being bad. Sometimes it ends up being better than expected. Um, but you have to allow the conversation to go there and you have to also be not so focused on what your next question is that you forget to listen to what they're saying. Cause you might say something that then sparks the next question. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't planned, but you said something interesting that sparks the next thing. Now all of a sudden we're down like this rabbit hole where I might be, you know, uh, giving you all these tidbits information that wasn't even planned on, you know what I mean? So you have to allow yourself to, to keep it conversational. Got you. Yeah, man, I think the conversational and paying attention to the moment is, is huge because mm-hmm. one of the things that attracted to me to the Breakfast Club when it first really started moving is like this media culture of yeah. when an artist or, you know, somebody goes on a media run and they're being asked the exact same questions at every right. single stop. <laughs> yeah, like, Bruh. And it'll be like the most generic questions, you know, really everything they want you to know from a PR standpoint and nothing right. that makes it worth watching. It really is almost like a, you know, 30 minute ad sometimes. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, if you notice a lot of their interviews, they won't sit there and talk about like, you know, the movie that somebody's promoting or the album the entire length of the interview or like for too long, you know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll get into a real conversation and then a lot of times they'll kind of end it talking about that thing. So it, mm. it's a give and take where the person, you know, gets to promote what they came to do, but at the same time, now we got a good conversation out of it as well, you know? And that's what people want to hear. You know, how many times are you going to ask somebody about their musical influences or things, you know, things of that nature? How'd you get your yep. Sorry, the industry. I mean, that's that's all interesting and it has its place, but at the end of the day, it's not showing somebody as a human. You know, I think that they, they do a great job at that. You know, they do a great job at, I don't want to say exposing because it has a negative connotation, but uh, showcasing who somebody, you know, really is. You know, if they're a crazy person, they're gonna, it's going to come out in the breakfast club, you know? Uh, you know, <laughs> Let's but say peel back layers. <laughs> Right, exactly, exactly. So, you know, you, you go into and you really get a good feel for who somebody is. I think, uh, especially like that second Takashi 6 9 interview, um, I think like when people walked away from watching that one, it was like, whoa, this is like a real dude. You know what I mean? Like, regardless of what you felt about it, I think a lot of people started feeling some sort of, you know, like empathy or they looked at him like a real person. You know what I mean? There was something interesting mm-hmm. about, about that, the way that, you know, that, that interview came across and, you know, that's something that is what makes them special. And you know, they weren't looking for the crazy moment where he was out and does all these things. It was like, like, they allowed him to have a real conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Well, like flipped on the other side, let's mm-hmm. say if I'm an artist, right. And I yeah. want to make sure that I give off of a good interview, like the things that are in my control, mm-hmm. right. How do I make sure that I come off well, right. What, what 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 should I do differently based on the people you've I mean, seen I, who've done, you know, good and bad? I think at the end of the day, you can't walk in there trying to be too cool for the room, you know? Um, you you got to just allow yourself to be relaxed. And it's tough. It's nerve-wracking, especially in an environment like that, man. It's a breakfast club. You know, everybody <laughs> dreams about being on there. There's, there's no getting around that. But yeah. I think, you know, we live in an age of transparency. And if you're trying to give off this persona of perfection or whatever the case may be that isn't you, it's very obvious to the audience, you know, and, and, um, you know, I think what makes them so special, you're talking about when they allow people to be humanized, it's when people allow themselves to also come across as human, you know what I'm saying? Um, And allow you to really just showcase your personality and don't try and be 
the cool rapper who's, you know, this rich dude, this and that. It's like a lot of stuff to, to open up, you know, I mean, obviously as much as you're comfortable with, but that's what is going to make people really mess with you even more is when they kind of really see like, okay, what is this person all about? You know, um, there are times where I'll, there'll be like a rapper that'll come in that I'm not like particularly a fan of or, or I don't get. And then I'll, I'll like when it's over, I'm like, damn, that's like, that's a smart dude. You know what I mean? Like he, you know, knows what he's doing. He's been on his grind. And like, that makes me, that makes me go check out their album to be honest with you a lot of times. Where it could gotcha. be somebody that I never liked them, you know, had an interest to in check out the music. But after the interview, I was like, yeah, I, I kind of want to see what they're all about now because I saw a side of them that I really didn't expect to kind of see, you know? Yo, I think that's huge, man. People <laughs> slip on the impact of an interview because there's been tons of people mm -hmm. where when I can see how they think, it definitely might encourage me to go check out their music or whatever they do yeah. in life. And then, of course, now you can even hear the music a little bit differently because you understand yeah. where it's coming from with that context versus absolutely whatever I mean, just sounded like before. Look at, I mean, look at somebody like Nipsey Hussle, you know, I think his music, you know, yeah. he, 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 this last project was great, but he transcended that because he was so open. He was talking real stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you could, uh, you know, watch his interviews as just somebody to, you know, get some game from. You know what I mean? Like, regardless of what you thought about his music, like, you could still be a fan of Nipsey Hussle because he was deeper than, than just the music thing, and he allowed himself to showcase all that, you know? Um, and I think that that is what transcends, you know, people becoming this, you know, actually somebody that, that people can mess with for a long period of time, you know, because you are being more than just some dude from the hood who, you know, has some sort of crazy stories about how he used to be on the block or whatever, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like that we've heard that story a million times at this point, you know, but there's gotta be more depth to it. You know, there's gotta be, when we see somebody like YG, you know, maybe breaking down, talking about Nipsey or something like that. Like, yo, that makes you like be a fan of him a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like behind, you know, he is like this dude from the streets, but he is also a real dude at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I think that, that that, that really gives you like this extra edge when you're able to really open it up and just hone in on, on you know, showcasing who you are. People might be a fan of you even if they don't love your music. Now you actually just have a fan who always just checks out your stuff because of that. You know what I mean? Because they maybe don't like the last project, but because they mess with you as a person, they're going to keep looking for whatever that next thing is and hope that they like the next project at least, you know? Oh.